I finally reached the end of my 30-day no news challenge, and what was the first piece of news I read this morning? Kevin Spacey is gay. No surprises there. He's under fire because he came out in the wake of accusations that he made a sexual advance towards a male child actor in 1986. Anthony Rapp, who was 14 at the time, said that Spacey, then 26, invited him to a party and seemed drunk when the alleged incident occurred. It's alleged that Spacey climbed on top of him at the end of the night. Spacey has been accused of deflecting the allegations by choosing an inappropriate time to come out of the closet. I could talk about Kevin Spacey all day, but that's not why I'm making this video. As some of you may know, I've been abstaining from news for the last 30 days because I was getting obsessed with it. I was checking the news every free moment I had. After seeing the Kevin Spacey article, I now realise that a lot of the news is not really news as such. It's more of a way to attract readership. Even Australia's national broadcaster, the ABC, which is funded by Australian taxpayers, has an article on its front page this morning about Kevin Spacey. Admittedly, it's titled, Kevin Spacey Criticised for Coming Out as a Deflection from Sexual Misconduct Claims. But still, it's tabloid journalism. So what has the last 30 days taught me? Not very much. I almost knew the outcome ahead of time. News has become sensational. News editors are there to attract as many viewers as possible. They choose article titles that make people click. I just fell for it myself by clicking on the Kevin Spacey article. Modern day journalism emphasises sensational crime stories, gossip columns about celebrities and sports stars, scandal mongering, and exaggerations of news events. I get it. It sells newspapers, or makes people click. It ultimately comes down to making money. Australia's ABC is not immune. Even the British public service broadcaster, the BBC, which is the world's oldest national broadcaster and the largest broadcaster in the world by number of employees, has published the Kevin Spacey article on its front page. It's the number two headline. I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. During my 30 days, did I miss out on any major news? No, not really. Every piece of major news was generally talked about in the office, or shown on every public TV set. Even the waiting room at my work has a TV in it, broadcasting all the latest gossip. When I was on jury duty recently, all the jurors had to wait in a special room before entering the courtroom. Of course, to stop people getting bored, they had a TV set showing all the latest news. What did I learn throughout my jury duty? Well, Queen Elizabeth drinks four alcoholic beverages a day and is medically classified as a binge drinker. Would you believe it? Although she's reached the ripe old age of 91, so I don't think binge drinking every day has hurt her. Clearly, the definition of binge drinking has changed over the years. So, will I continue my abstinence and not watch the news? Probably not. I quite enjoy having a quick look at the news every morning, but one thing I will try to do is not look at the news every five minutes like I used to do. It's completely unnecessary and a waste of time. How many different news stories, all written from slightly different angles, do I need to read about the Kevin Spacey controversy? I think once is enough. In summary, I'm not going to quit the news, I'm just going to moderate myself. I think once or twice a day is plenty of time to learn all about the latest exploits of our favourite Hollywood stars and world leaders such as Donald Trump and Malcolm Turnbull. Just out of interest, does anybody know the name of the President of Africa's largest country? Does anybody know the name of Africa's largest country? No, nor did I. I had to look it up. Algeria's President, Abdelaziz Bouteflika has been president since 1999. That's 18 years. I had no idea. It shows you what the Australian media has taught me about the world. Bugger all.